Okay, here we go. Oh my god, I gotta put my glasses on. I'm so the sun getting old. DOG, you still here? Okay. So you're gonna be my little service dog, alright? DOG, never mind the squirrel. Hey! DOG! Yeah, okay, 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 okay. So you be good, you make sure I'm calm, okay? DOG, look at me. DOG! Okay. Here we go. Now this should be good. DOG? Hey! DOG! This is a very touchy issue. You're my service dog. Make sure I stay calm. And I had two double double. Boy, this should be good. Okay, with the mask on, how many people know who, who you are? Yeah, I think so. Huh? I think so. You think so? I think so. Well, you can tell them. Must be these, those evil eyes, should you tell? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and you are? Uh, Roger Brown. And you are? Chief of Police in Fredericton. Out for a coffee with Charles on New Year's Eve. Yeah, oh by the way, just uh, the And I bought the coffee. You bought the coffee, yes, so nice. The cops, Tim Horton. There you go. Two Boston cream stuck together. Yeah, that wasn't my fault though. No, nah, okay. So, you signed a three year term or what's, how, how does that go? I signed a three year term. I got a year and a half completed. And we'll see where it goes. How's it going so far? Good, good, good people. Uh, a lot of work done. A lot of focus on uh, boots on the street. I think there's a way. That yeah, yeah. What's, what's, uh, how much money did you pay? Uh, I didn't. Pay how much money him. did you pay to get that big picture? I never seen such a big picture on you the front one? page. No. <laughs> DOG. DOG. He's listening. Calm, calm me down. <laughs> Bought one. I didn't. I don't choose that stuff. I was just talking. They 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 choose the picture. Come on, come on. There got to be a communication between the no. Irving media. No, you and the Irving media. They're what? good people. Of and course they're good. You would say that because the picture was about this big. But I don't want a picture of me. I'd rather picture you. <laughs> the Irving media don't even know who I am uh, anymore. I, focus, Charles. Focus. Okay. Focus. Okay. So yeah, so boots on the street. Boots on the street. And all that means is, you know what? The city needs to feel safe. They need to see a police presence. And we need to try and continue to do the job we need to do. I haven't seen the cop walk the beat in the boat. Get out. I've walked the beat. Oh, you, you. I have. I've been in and out of businesses on York and downtown. How come I've never seen you? What time is this? Seven o'clock in the morning? Asleep. You're still asleep. Okay, so is it in the morning? Well, there's no. There's the evenings. Um, Halloween night. We are out. You I try, work. You're trying to be funny. I was working Halloween, Halloween nights. Halloween night. Everybody has a mask on. What well, the hell? got a mask on now anyway. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're out and about. There's always people out there. And they were seen that. They must be undercover. No, that's you undercover. They're out in uniform. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm on that's undercover. Right. Now. I don't have that blogger jacket anymore. Oh, and then look what you're wearing. Oh, yeah, if I can get rid Proud of Proud Canadian. If I can, yeah, yeah. We gotta have a police force that focus on crime and not try to fo DOG! <laughs> Do your job! So, you gonna stick around, you? Uh, I'm gonna stick around for a while. I got work to do. I got things to do. Like what? Continue towards uh, having, I guess, the organization with the tools they need to do the job. And our job is changing. You know the focus now on um, Black Lives Matter or the defund. That, that, that requires us to retool. That requires us to look at, is this stopping, real? St not stopping black people or native running a bicycle with no helmet at nine o'clock at night? Well, if it's, it's got nothing to do with the black people riding a helmet or First Nations or, or a white bump. person, what it's got to do with is if anybody is not complying with a law that is... Ah, bullshit. Then you see the snob going by. Oh, that's okay. No. Like gotta, a black everyone, guy, no, no, in, no, I don't agree with bump. that. If, if, and you know what? If I know that as one of our officers who's not treating everybody the same way with respect to the same laws, then we held accountable. That's pretty simple. It's got nothing to do with race. It's got nothing to do with color. And if there's a perception of that, i got to work on that. That got to be a change. The other thing is you we keep gotta, on you keep on drinking those double double. You won't be around too <laughs> too long. The other thing is we got to focus too on doing work that we're trained to do. We're police officers, and a lot of the work that we get involved with, with respect to mental health, youth at risk, 
uh, homelessness, our addiction issues, they're more social issues. They're not police issues. But who else is going to respond at 2 in the morning? Who else is going to respond on New Year's Day? By the way, somebody praised you asshole. I mean, you police officers there. But I'm sure every now and then people are happy with what we do. Yeah. Yeah, somebody praised you like you were God. So they said that you're very professional in your line of work. Dilji, stop me. Did you? But, and but they you, very praised you. you. You're like social workers. You're good. You're good. They, they told me that they were going to write you a good letter. That you, they praise the police force like they were God. Why don't you write a letter saying that? Try, don't be funny. <laughs> <laughs> you fell under, right? Yeah. But you know what? There are people who appreciate the work of police officers. There are, and I know, like I, I got a call yesterday morning from a lady who wanted to just call and say how well a police officer did in responding to a simple accident, hit and run accident. So there are people that we have officers that are doing great work, doing great police work, and they deserve credit. And every now and then someone from the public would give credit where credit is due. That's not always the case, but it happens. And there are often times too where we don't meet the expectations. And if you don't meet the expectations, I look into it and try and fix it and move forward. Was but that, I, go ahead. Was that word that I hate, Barry Midnight, former chief of police, that's where it really started. I don't believe that a chief, former police chief, uh, Leanne Fitch and Barry Midnight, and you are the active police chief, and you send a letter to somebody, and that same letter I got from Barry Midnight that you put a complaint in and you send a letter and what's that word? The complaint's been denied fo phobarous? F frivolous. Yeah, what the hell is that word just to date? Frivolous? A complaint that's not founded. It doesn't have any basis. Yeah, but can you use another word beside that goddamn frivolous? What okay, the? I guess there's other word for it, but baseless or not founded, frivolous. But some of them say vexatious, where a complaint is, you know, there's no real complaint, but they're doing it to do something against somebody else. Uh, frivolous is is used often in those complaints because the complaint is not based on anything that can be verified, that can be checked out and there's no sense to it that's why they use it how come i got that letter that word but i had facts well then maybe they use it appropriately dog <laughs> dog come on here come on come on calm me down do your job yeah. we're not talking about me we're talking come yeah. on your service dog that's it stay right there but you know here's the issue though with complaints when a complaint comes in we should not look at the who sent it in the complaint should be looked at the exact same way, if, even if there was no name on it. You look at the facts of what happened. How many complaints so, did you get last year? I don't know. I'd have to look into it. I don't know. I can tell you. It's pretty easy to find out. I just don't know. I was somewhere. We some don't have a, you know, we get, we get, uh, you know, public complaints, no doubt. People that felt feel like they haven't been treated properly or whatever the case may be. Each and every one of them, though, are dealt with. If there's something that the member did that's not right, I'll deal with it. But the police act, it protects the cops. No, it doesn't. Yes, it no, does. No, actually, you know what? The police act, if you look into the police act and you read it properly. I'm not a lawyer. The police act is to hold police officers accountable. And if you don't do your job, then that's when the police act kicks in. In some cases, people would look at that almost as a double jeopardy. If you go out and get involved in a criminal offense, and you go to the court system as a general, as a person in the public eye, you go through the court system, you get what you get and it's over. If you're a police officer, you end up going through the court system, you get what you get, it's not over. Then you end up being investigated under the police act. Then you could end up with a whole bunch of different sanctions, lose your job, demotions, you name it, it's all there. And you've seen that happen. So the police act is a, is a mechanism to hold us accountable and as a police officer, and you are certainly one that's aware of this, we are supposed to be held to a higher standard. Yeah, but you're not. There's nobody to go if you're on welfare. You got no lawyers, you got no... Uh, what do you mean? People on, DOG. People on me down. welfare got access to lawyers, you know that. Yeah. Legal aid. Legal Free. aid? Yeah. You go there, then suddenly they just tell you, don't get me going. They got, they go, 
Trump? Guilty. They go there, they give you a phone, a lawyer says, okay, don't tell them any, what happened. Oh, don't tell them anything. Now, that's another thing we're going to talk about. Because the days people look in the courts, down, they, they, they show up at the police station, and they see a lawyer on TV. Lawyer up. Okay, the lawyer up. There's no lawyers at the police station. No. And they put them in a boot, and they say, all right, uh, just sign those papers and you'll be out of there in 10 minutes. But I didn't do anything. Just sign those papers. Well, did you talk to your lawyer? Yeah, but we got- Yes, but, I did. But next thing you know, you gotta sign police conditions. Right, but that's not our- Police the conditions. The issue with us though, as soon as somebody is uh, detained, arrested, they have access to a lawyer. And that's the first thing we always give people. Yeah, they okay? got this. So after that, there's a whole different system. Country. Condition, police conditions. Yeah, but the, the conditions though, are separate. If you commit an offense and before you're released, they're released on conditions. That's to keep the peace and be of good behavior. Yeah, yeah, be behavior. And what does that have, mean? Well, you don't want a continuation of an offense. If you were, if you were involved in an assault, if you were involved in a, you know, a dispute. Yeah, no and contact. You, right. So you're just putting conditions in there to have that person released, so they're not in custody. Mm -hmm. And you're putting conditions on them yeah. to keep the peace and be a good behavior. What but, I was saying about the lawyer, sorry, Roger. Oh, if the Roger, if the well, should, should I call you Mr. Brown? No, you got that's my father. But you're you're all you, you're all riled up now. So you gave me two large double. I got two large doubles and a Boston cream. I didn't eat. Okay, you're lucky. Going back to the lawyer, mm -hmm. and then now lawyer up. There's no such thing as a lawyer at the police station. Now they take people on paid fine put them in the jail cell in Shidiac or St. John and they put the camera on their face and you talk to the courts. Mm -hmm. They said because of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. They said that might become the new norm. But You got an opinion on that? Or? Yeah, but it, to me, it is, listen, there's a whole bunch of new norms. Most of the meetings I do now are via face, Zoom face. or, or uh, Teams or video conference. Most city council meetings are dealt that way. It's, it is. It, it will become a new norm. The 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 medium as to how you get a hold of a lawyer shouldn't matter. Whether you're doing it by Zoom, whether you do it by phone, whether you meet a judge in person, or you do it by Zoom, as long as the person is being dealt with properly, Pro that, yeah. according with to the legal respect, re legal requirements, with respect, and so on. Whether it's in person or on Zoom, and it's recorded, and you can see it. Yeah, I the, don't see the issue. But if, oh, yeah, this is a big issue because if the guy in in the cell, right. all he sees is the person talk. The judge is talking, the camera goes on, on mm -hmm. him. The duty counsel talks, it goes on him. It's like me, I was in court mm -hmm. once. Me, me, me. We gotta, we gotta stop focusing on me, me, Yeah, me. you gotta go broader. But anyway, me, 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 right quick, right quick. Uh, I was in court and next thing you know, Judy Clementing, that was the judge. And the lawyer sort of look at what I was saying. The lawyer look at her and smirk. And I got mad. I just went like this. I said, hey, don't you ever, ever smirk at what I saw him. There's another case that I know this person had a partner that had mental issues. The other partner was in court. So the judge was deciding what to do, like to release it. And the other partner was in court going like this. Like, no, no, no. Like, there's a more hand language. Mm -hmm and seeing the feeling of the so-called accused mm -hmm. but if you have start having hand signal mm -hmm. and facial expression between the prosecutor and the duty counsel and the judge and you're not there to see all that i got a problem with that well listen it is restrictive you you, you can't get emotion out of a video conference it's, it's, it is what it is right mm -hmm. and i'm not sure that we're going to see a total you know elimination of the face-to-face -face like we always have but I think what we've learned through the virus and how we need to keep the job being done we still need to focus on people's rights you need to focus on uh, what people have access to fair trial access to a lawyer all that kind of stuff and the medium is just what we're going to have to learn to get used to if there are areas though where somebody is acting outside then there's systems and processes in place to, to back check that. You you know that you got whether you got a public complaint, whether you got the uh, right to access right, access to information, uh, all those things are systems that 
hold me accountable. Keep me a check. It works for some, not for you, others. You do have, you're very, very accessible. That's why we're here. Uh, right. And there, you're very accessible. I will give you credit on that. But, uh, no, no. I ask you a question. Yeah. You guys still at the station at the schools? No. Huh? No. Still? We're not in school permanent. No? But. Uh, you you got rid of that. I did. Yeah. I did. How, how did that turn out? Um, we just do it differently now. Listen, I, why would undercover? I Undercover? No, undercovers, no, we're not there undercover. We're, there's some plain clothes members that might be around a school during lunch hour if there's a drug issue or if there's a perceived, uh, if there's a fight or something like that. But what we do with the schools now, actually I just increased a, a new position in there that's going to deal with the schools from a proactive perspective to try and be able to educate to get ahead of some of the things that are problematic educate on math educate on addictions educate on diversity how do you how do you, how do you edu sorry about that how do you educate the kids on meth do you say okay kids cocaine meh, heroin acid yeah. i tried that mushroom i right. tried that that's what happens to me anyway but crystal meth do not touch crystal meth. I asked the Minister of Education that, mm -hmm. and there's no, they don't want to tell the kids to try drugs. How do you do it? Well, first of all, you got to start to form relationships with the kids to try and have them understand what can happen if you go down this road, and to try and educate them as to the reasons why, why don't they you shouldn't. Give a, why don't you give a link of my videos of when I filmed downtown? They, well, they can see the, the links anyway. Go they, in and they can see that anyway. Listen, kids are far more astute when it comes to social media than most of oh, us. Oh, yes. And they see all that stuff. But from the school perspective, paying a, you know, they talk about, we get all kinds of people saying, we shouldn't be doing this, we shouldn't be doing that, we shouldn't be doing this, we shouldn't be doing that. Well, we're paid to be police officers. We have a role to play uh, with respect to students, but I don't think our full-time role is to be in a school 24-7. Right, that's not our role. So you only go there when you get calls? No, I, I we, go there, off no we go there proactively. We deal with the, t uh, the, the teachers, the principals, school boards to try and plan ahead so if an incident occurs, what do we do if we find drugs? What do we do to educate the kids so they understand the downstream effects of some of this stuff proactively if we know something's going to be happening that we're going to be there ahead of time it's just a different way of doing business that's all the people you have dealing with them on the street people on the street or in the homes or all over the place answer me this that a lot of people say that i'm uh, i don't longer talk about drug issues or poverty because some people say it's not crystal met it's mental illness how many percentage would you say that's not on drugs, just mental illness. And how many percent would you say this is crystal meth? I don't know. I don't have a, I don't know the exact numbers, but I can tell you this, that a lot of the mental health issues that we're dealing with starts off with drug abuse and drug addiction. Does it? How about Absolutely. Ritalin? Is that where it started? Ritalin? Well, I don't know. Kids? I don't know. I, you gotta ask a doctor that. I don't know. All I am saying though, Pure, clear, you know, mental health is an issue within society. There's no two ways about it. The wiring, some people are born with mental health issues. We ADHD. Are, okay, and you know what? So then what we try and do is you try and curb that and you try to get help with it, whether it be through medication or you get help with through, you know, uh, counseling or whatever the case may be. But some people try to treat mental health through self-medication. And when you go to self-medication and you start going down the road of drug use or drug abuse, obviously that only exacerbates the situation. It makes it worse. Then you're in a then you're in a spiraling. Because then in addition to what was your original mental health condition is now something far more severe. And then you can't deal with it. And that's where we're finding right now, if you look around the city and you start you know, peeling back the layers to find out why somebody is where they are doing what they're doing, you find that the root cause was X, but it only became, it was only exacerbated based on C, D, E, and F, then the situation is pretty much out of control. Because by that time, you often talk about it, it's a revolving door. You end up with nowhere to live, nobody wants you, 
and then you're looking for your basic security in life food shelter and then you lose all the other parts of life with respect to relationships and all that yeah. and then it's just spiraling down downward right? you think they should have portable washroom in downtown you don't have to answer that listen everybody has a right to and have a piss or shit what is it? pretty simple isn't it you know really but here's the other thing though this is where it falls off the rails if, if you have a right to go to a bathroom the person going in behind you also has a right that the bathroom is kept sensibly. It's not turned into a place to use drugs and on and on. Oh, right? they so, won't trust me. Somebody doing drug in there, you start knocking at the door the, and say, listen, asshole, I want a shit, you but know. It, but uh, there's a balancing act, <laughs> right? So yeah, everyone needs to have access to a washroom. That's a right. given basic right. But, but how come we don't have one? Well, there are public washrooms. No, there at, at no, 3 o'clock. Not two, in the city right now? At, at portable washroom down in Actually, England. if I'm not mistaken, the city made a decision to install a portable washroom in the downtown core, not far from City Hall. You check that out. A portable washroom? Yes, sir. You check, and you know what? If I'm right, you gotta go on the blog and say it. Oh, there's a lot of things you are not right. Is that right? Uh, there's a lot of things you are now not right. There's a lot of things you are right. It's 1 30 on New Year's Eve, and I gotta get going. New Year's Eve, one more thing. Go ahead. Legislator. Uh, do still police still go there? I know they got sheriff and the legislator. Yeah, now. we don't. Uh, no. Do you still we'll, go we'll, there? We will go there if. if I know they go on training. There's three cops. Four you know cops why we're going on? in there? So just we understand the uh, layout of the building. We know the building, and if there's ever a call where we yeah. need to go, we know exactly what we're doing. But you no longer go there. They uh, on uh, off got duty. They pay them sixty bucks an hour. That's all they, they got. They their own security. That's not our role. You no longer there? No, our role is okay. policing. Mr. Brown, oh Roger. Happy New Year. Have we'll you, do this again. Oh, my, my, my sister, she's a family doctor. And you know what she told me? She told me even that she saw me do an interview and then she, she's bored. Okay, so we'll go like this no, and pretend. No, no, yeah, pretend. pretend. That's no, what she I'm goes saying. like this. No, okay, that's that what, that's okay. what she said. So, Happy New Year. We'll do this again. Did I miss anything? We, we missed. We got lots that we can talk about. But. Uh, so, the city's still safe? City's great. City, great city, and it is safe. Oh, yeah, it is a great city. It is, and it's safe. But we're going to continue to do what we have to do. You continue to what you have to do. Hold us accountable. I have no issue with that. Well, Fair we're enough. doing good. Fair enough. So, DOG, thank you very much. Where are you? He's in the back. And uh, there you are. So, thank you very much. And here we are, the Mactaquack Dam. And I don't have to put you in there. You don't have to put me in there. So, everything safe. And happy okay. New Year. Okay, you're doing a good job, DOG. Good boy.